What is going on, YouTube? Andrew Miller from HookemHeadlines.com. Coming back at y'all today uh, with another NFL Draft video breakdown. I believe this is the fifth in the series now. Um, today we are taking a look at safety Anthony Cook. Uh, Cook was a five-year defensive back at Texas. And for about his first two and a half or three years was more of a rotational uh, corner defensive back. And then uh, for each of the last two seasons, uh, he was an entrenched starter at various spots. Um, but, you know, I, before I really dive too deep into this, I do want to say that, you know, Cook wasn't an NFL draft combine invitee. He didn't receive a look there. Or he didn't receive an invite. And I thought that was one of the bigger snubs. I do think he's a good enough prospect to at least get that, get that recognition. Um, but considering that along with, I, I can't really find that many evaluations or, you know, film compilation specifically in an NFL draft format for him. So a lot of, you know, the bullet points or notes that I have here are all based on my own evaluation and coverage of, of him at Texas and through his recruitment through the last five or six years. Um, that said, um, I am excited to do this because hopefully it provides more insight to his game and, um, you know, at least gets for maybe some Texas fans out there, or if your team signed him or draft drafted him in a, in a couple of months, then, uh, you know, hopefully this can get some dialogue going and some more information out there about his game. But yeah, the format for these videos, if you haven't seen some of the previous ones in the series, um, you know, go over, I, I go over his, the player's background to Texas, their recruitment, their trajectory in college. Um, and then talk about strengths, areas of improvement or weaknesses, and then, uh, you know, really the projection uh, over the near term and the long term at the next level. So, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in here. Uh, Cook was originally a four-star recruit uh, hailing out of Lamar High School in the Houston area. Uh, he signed with Texas in the 2018 class. Coming out of high school, he was about six foot 170, um, so already had good length. Coming out of high school, uh, in the 247 Sports Composite, he was ranked as a top 75 high school recruit in the 2020, or excuse me, in the 2018 class and a uh, top 10 cornerback in the nation. So uh, definitely was very highly touted coming out of high school. He was originally recruited by uh, Jason Washington, Corby Meekins, some assistants under uh, Tom Herman's staff at, at Texas. And uh, Cook was recruited when D Todd Orlando was the defensive coordinator at the time in Texas. Uh, the first of what would be three defensive coordinators he would play under during his time on the 40. Um, he, you know, he was part of a 2018 class for Texas that ranked in the top three in the nation. And so he was in a mix with a lot of talented blue chips. But I will say that among the blue chip defensive recruits in the 2018 class, um, he was one of the more impactful right away. Um, you know, if I'm looking at his true freshman campaign, I uh, got more than 150 defensive snaps. Um, they came over the course of about a half dozen games and he had some impressive showings. He was, um, you know, he was, he flashed a lot. I will say as a cover corner, um, you know, he was pretty polished in most areas of his game. Um, didn't really have that many, that many just total like disasters of a game or like that many mental mistakes that you might expect out of a, out of a true freshman defensive back. Um, and so, I, you know, there was a lot of hope for him after his true freshman campaign. The box score stats won't blow you away by any means, but for, again, getting around 150, 160 defensive snaps and only playing in a half dozen games, still racked up 18 combined tackles, one tackle for loss, one sack, and one pass breakup. Had two stops, uh, just one missed tackle. And so, uh, all told, um, a very productive and uh, consistent season for him as a true freshman. Um Unfortunately, looking at his 2019 campaign, uh, it wasn't as consistent. Um, he definitely got more reps. He was uh, more firmly entrenched in the defensive back rotation, uh, played around 100 or excuse me, 450 defensive snaps in 2019, uh, finished up with two dozen tackles, one tackle for loss, two pass breakups and a forced fumble. Year over year, though, he did regress um, in most of the areas that he was graded for his defensive game um, and you know some of the issues that we would see recur for the next couple of years or for the rest of his career at texas in certain areas uh, started to pop up he had a 21.2 or 21.2 missed tackle rate missed tackle percentage um and a, a lot of that came in a lot of that came in pass coverage or on pass plays 
And so, uh, you know, there, there were areas that he really needed to improve heading into uh, 2020. And, uh, you know, some of the struggles he faced in 2019 would ultimately lead to him start undergoing a position change. You know, his first two years at Texas, he was pretty much exclusively a, a cornerback. Um, that's what he was recruited as out of high school. And so, um, you know, given the flashes he showed as a freshman, it made sense that, you know, he was making his way up the cornerback depth chart. You know, in, in 2020, you started to see him getting more reps um, as uh, as more of like a nickel or uh, slot corner. Um, that's where a good portion of his defensive, little over 200 defensive snaps came from. Um, and, and 2020, while it was his worst graded year defensively, I think you started to see some positive transformations in his game where, you know, he, he was picked on from time to time as a cover corner and had some missed tackle issues in, in 2019, but, um, you know, missed fewer tackles was starting to really come into his own as, as a run defender as well. That's where you start to see that become a strength in his game. Um, that was actually one of the few areas that he improved in terms of his defensive grading year over year from 2019 to 2020. Um, and so while there were still some weaknesses that season, he had some really good games. He played a really solid, um, a really solid game against OU in 2020. Um, that was one of his career best defensive grades, had four stops, no missed tackles, um, and started to show some real versatility as well. But uh, yeah, so 2020, I would say, was more of the transition year for him. His stats actually looked more like they did during his true freshman campaign where he had 18 tackles, one and a half tackles for loss. Um, and so, again, more of a necessary transition year for him in 2020. If we fast forward to 2021, that was really his best year at Texas. He had another position change where he essentially became the full-time starting nickelback. Um, and I do want to say, too, it was his third defensive coordinator in three years because you had the coaching change. You had Tom Herman. Uh, getting fired early in the 2021 offseason and then being replaced by Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, Sark hired uh, Pete Kwiatkowski um, as a co-defensive coordinator in the play caller. And, um, you know, I think PK saw Cook at best fit as a nickel, which there were glimpses of that in his game uh, going back to the 2020 season. So, you know, I, I did think that was the best fit for him. Um, and, you know, the 2020, or excuse me, the 2021 campaign, it was his only all big 12 selection. That was the only year of his five at Texas where he was an all big 12 honoree. Um, and the numbers showed it. Uh, he posted a career best defensive grade that season. He was one of the top three highest graded tacklers among all big 12 defensive backs. Um, and he led Texas in tackling grade and pass rush grade. Um, so again, versatility um, and really the best positional fit for him was kind of found in, in, in 2021. Um, he had a career best missed tackle rate at just 4.3%. Um, he ended up posting 47 combined tackles, uh, three tackles for loss, one sack, three pass breakups, one forced fumble and one fumble recovery. Um, and, you know, I, I had mentioned uh, a couple of times already in this video that, you know, there were times in 29 or mainly in 2020 when you started to see him come into his own as a run defender. Um, and 2020, I think 2021 is really where that started to take center stage. Um, he was one of the uh, leaders among defensive backs in the Big 12 in run stop percentage, finished up the season with 16 defensive stops. Um, if you compare stops to missed tackles, I think that's a good way to look at kind of like a boom or bust uh, percentage, if you will, or at least like a successful versus unsuccessful play rate for an individual defender. And he had 16 stops compared to just two missed tackles. So again, really, uh, really was consistent and very, very versatile for the Texas defense in 2021. 2021 was a rough year for the Texas defense. You know, there were, it, it was a lot of the guys were slow to adapt to PK scheme. I don't think that all of the right, I, I don't think all of the defensive personnel was correctly utilized either. There was often guys looking out of place or, um, you know, slow to read and react to plays, but Cook was one of the guys that acted is sort of the glue of the secondary, if you will, because um, he was one of the most consistent and proficient defenders that Texas had. He graded out, I believe, graded out as one of the three best defenders that season for Texas among the starters. Um, so it, 
that said, he definitely had plenty of momentum heading into the 2022 season. Um, but he did undergo another position change uh, to fill a need at, at safety. Um, he converted from nickel to uh, boundary safety uh, to start alongside Jaron Thompson at field safety. And um, while if you just look at his box score stats and some of his defensive grades, you could see some year over year regressions, but he was still solid. A lot of the strengths that you saw again burgeoning over the previous two years um, and a lot of the more productive areas of his game, uh, run defense, namely um, improvement in tackling technique, um, more consistency, I think, as a as a pass defender as well. Um, a lot of those came to the forefront for him um, again in 2022. Um, he was a consistent force back there as a safety. Um, he, he was really an entrenched vocal leader at that point as well. Finished up the 2022 season uh, with a little over 60 combined tackles, career high three and a half tackles for loss, one sack, also a career high five pass breakups. One of the things I didn't mention that I did want to say um, before getting into his strengths was he did become a more disruptive um, coverage coverage safety or coverage nickelback um, for, for each of his last two years. I think he had like three, maybe four pass breakups in his first three seasons at Texas, where he was actually targeted more often, or at least at a higher percentage. Um, but, you know, his his ability to disrupt and force more incompletions uh, was more pronounced by far during his final two years at Texas. Um, his two highest forced incompletion rates were also during his uh, fourth and fifth year, so in 2021 and 2022. Um, again, all told, I think that, uh, Cook was really, really solid, consistent, pretty versatile. He really just filled whatever need Texas had in the secondary, um, in, in his two years playing under Pete Kwiatkowski. I think that really has to be commended the way he emerged as a vocal leader after three pretty turbulent years filled with some different position changes and coaching staff turnover at Texas. Um, and so I think you can ultimately look at his ability to adapt there and really fill, whatever need Texas had in the secondary is a major plus when looking at his, um, you know, when evaluating him at the next level. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and move into, uh, move into some of his strengths. If you're looking at the screen here, um, they are pretty detailed. Um, but again, these are all based on my own evaluations and notes. So, um, th this is mostly stuff that I picked up on in the last few years. But starting off here, we, you know, I, I've mentioned a, a couple of times already that uh, he, he is a solid run defender, um, especially from the nickel or, or boundary safety position. And um, when he gets ahead of steam going downhill, he brings a lot of pop in the pads. He can be a hard hitter. And um, along with that, he brings about his ability to, um, you know, get stops, get run stuffs, not miss many tackles. Again, I mentioned that he's pretty physically gifted. He's got a really good wingspan. So a lot of times when he does take the right approach and get a head full of steam, um, you know, uh, contesting in run defense, he's going to hit the running back pretty hard or hit the ball carrier pretty hard. Um, I think he had three forced fumbles as a run defender uh, during his time in Texas, which was the bulk of his forced fumbles. So um, definitely a strength in his game. You know, he, he's versatile and he's built up a good amount of reliability from his experience playing in like three or four different positions in the secondary at Texas. Um, you know, I, I think whether it's as a slot corner, a, a boundary safety, or like as, as a true nickelback that he can, that it, as, as a more multiple um, utility guy can, can excel or at least make his case to earn a spot on an NFL roster. Cause you know, a lot of safeties or a lot of, a lot of the safeties in this class might only fit one position or, you know, might not be as proven at multiple spots or as willing to change positions as cook. And so, uh, you know, I think you have to look at that as a plus, um, the, the next one here, I, I really should put an asterisk by it. Maybe I will in editing this video, but, um, he does a nice job of keeping the play in front of him, namely in run defense. Uh, he, not only was he good at, you know, meeting the ball carrier at the line of scrimmage or getting run stuffs, but he also was good at cleaning up plays. Um, you know, if you watch the film on him, you'll see that, uh, you know, he does a nice job of backfilling or, you know, preventing maybe a five yard run from turning into a 10, 15 or 20 yard run. 
he cleaned up and did a lot of the dirty work for Texas in run defense where, you know, maybe a guy like Jaron Thompson or Deshaun Jameson, other experienced defensive backs that were starters in the last two seasons at Texas weren't as proficient. Cook had to make up and mask some of those weaknesses. And he did a really nice job of doing that. Um, again, as a run defender, didn't miss many tackles, made a lot of plays. So um, that's definitely going to be a strength of his at the next level. You know, I, I mentioned that he's good at keeping the play in front of him in pass coverage. I would say that's mostly in the deep passing game. Um, there were times in the last two seasons, and I think Texas fans know this, but times when he uh, – when he did look a little bit lost or could be prone to giving up a big play um, if he got caught in one-on-one -on -one coverage or, but for the most part, he did a nice job. I don't think he allowed a single passing play in the last two years over 35 yards. Um, and in total in his career at Texas, I think there was only one pass play that he allowed over 40 yards. And he is the only Texas defensive back to do that in the last five years that they got as many reps as he did. So um, at least from the ability to cover the deep pass and, um, at least improve year over year and keeping the play in front of him in pass coverage. Um, he was reliable in that regard. Um, the next strength I have for him here is, traces back more to his physical gifts. He's got above average length and he's pretty strong uh, for a DB. Again, he stands around six foot one, uh, 195, 200 pounds, maybe puts on a little bit more weight um, before he measures in it like the Texas pro day. But um, you know, th there's, there's probably going to be some safeties that are around, um, you know, that are close to Cook on on teams' draft boards that might be further down draft boards because their their frame or their uh, their weight isn't isn't up to snuff with what you want in the NFL. And um, you know, that's definitely not a question mark for Cook. I don't think he's got a good wingspan. Um, he's pretty fluid, um, and he's very strong. And so again, that's got to be looked at as a strength for him. Um, and the last thing here, I've been hinting at it and mentioning it, but he's reliable as a run stopping strong safety. I, I do, I do think his, uh, run stopping ability is, is going to be his biggest strength. So let's, uh, let's move on to, uh, you know, potential areas of improvement, weaknesses, things like that. Um, and, and I'm starting off with, uh, his tackling approach, his ability to contest space. This is mostly... What I'm talking about here is mostly in pass coverage situations. Um, you know, I, I mentioned a moment ago that Cook sometimes when he was caught um, in one-on-one -on -one coverage, or you know, you saw that when he was a when when he was uh, at cornerback. You also saw that when he was playing at safety. Um, it was a little bit more covered up when he was at uh, nickel, but um, he is prone to giving up chunk plays in the short and inter intermediate passing game. He might not let it go off for a huge, or he might not let the ball carry get away for a huge gain, you know, 30 plus yards. But um, again, that that's going to be, uh, I think that'll end up being a mark against him. I will say to end that, to end that point for him in terms of his areas of improvement that he, he, he was improving in terms of his ability to contest space and pass coverage in the last few years. So that's going to be a major area uh, for him to focus on during the draft scouting process and uh, really in camp in the next few months. Um, this is a natural transition to the next area of improvement is that he can be picked on in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Um, you know, in this day and age in the NFL, a lot of scouts are going to be looking for, you know, rangier safeties, you know, guys with good length, which Cook does have, but, you know, that are faster, can cover more space. Um, and, you know, really that, that, even if they are stuck on one, stuck in one-on-one -on -one man coverage so that they can handle their own. I don't necessarily think that's the case with Cook, at least from looking at his production and, and um, you know, some of the flaws in his game the last few years. Um, in terms of the more detailed weaknesses or areas of improvement, uh, this is the last, like, more specific one that I have is that he's not very rang rangy at either safety position. Um you know, I, I will say that he does he can cover a lot of ground, and he's a nice safety net at the back end of def, of your defense in um, run in run stopping situations. But in pass coverage, he's not very rangy. That's always been a mark against him. So you know, each of these three points talking about is maybe taking poor tackling approaches or not very effectively contesting the ball carrier in space, um, as well as being picked on in one on one coverage and not covering a whole lot of range. 
Um, and then the last two areas of improvement or weaknesses, I think do a better job of summing up maybe why there's going to be a cap on him um, as an NFL prospect. The main thing is that he really just does have a limited ceiling. There's not one particular area of his game, again, maybe besides run defense, but while that's going to be looked at as probably his biggest strength, he's not, I don't, like, I would say if you had to name the top five run-stopping safeties in this draft class, he's still not going to be one of them. He might be top 10 or top 15. Um, but especially in terms of his ability and pass coverage, his ranginess, things that I've already mentioned, um, there, there's not one particular area that scouts really look for in, in a modern in a modern safety in the NFL that, um, you know, they're, they're really going to serve as major value for him. Um, and then – that feeds into my final point here where it's hard to find his natural fit at the next level where, you know, beyond maybe someone that I, you know, I mentioned two or three positions earlier, slot corner, uh, nickel, and then um, like kind of boundary or strong safety where I think he can fill depth, but that some of the, you know, some of the weaknesses in his game or some of the shortcomings uh, can still be picked apart. It's hard for me to see a path for him to consistently solidify himself as on a 2D but yeah, overall, I think in terms of how he projects at the next level, um, probably seventh round to undrafted free agent. If he does go as an undrafted free agent, and I mentioned some of the value he brings to the table, I think his ability to get down to work and adjust and really fill whatever need is there for a team in, in, in the defensive backfield, that's going to bring a lot of value. I think it's something that can help him scratch and claw his way onto a roster at least. Um, and, you know, it, this is a draft that I think that defensive backs are going to be greatly valued. And so, you know, maybe if you see on early in day three, that a lot of safeties are falling off the board that again, maybe cook just via need for multiple teams ends up getting taken maybe in the late sixth. I think late sixth is probably the earliest he would go, but you know, sixth, seventh round. So, um, ultimately, I think he is on a path to at least make an NFL roster. He'll get his shot. That's pretty much all I got for uh, Anthony Cook's breakdown. Um, again, this is something that all these are my own notes. I've mentioned that multiple times. Um, but again, hopefully get some more information out there on his game um, and you know at least get some dialogue going again if your team picks him or if you're a Texas fan just following him uh, through the draft scouting process. So anyway, for Andrew Miller at HogamHeadlines.com, that's pretty much it. Welcome. Okay.